artificial intelligence or AI. I looked on the internet. Is that a wise thing to do, I wonder, <laughs> in retrospect? But anyway, I looked on the internet. And according to the internet, intelligence has been defined in many ways the capacity for abstraction, logic, understanding, self-awareness, learning, emotional knowledge, reasoning, planning, creativity, critical thinking, and problem solving. More generally, it can be described as the ability to perceive or infer information and to retain it as knowledge to be applied towards adaptive behaviours within an environment or context. Intelligence is most often studied in humans, but it's also been observed in both non-human animals and in plants, despite controversy as to whether some of these forms of life exhibit intelligence. Intelligence in computers or other machines is called artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, AI. Okay, before we consider AI, let's think about human intelligence then. Again, a, a definition of the dictionary here. The ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills. The ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills. So, first question, where does this ability come from? God is the answer. Any ability that we have comes from Almighty God. Genesis 1, verse 27, um, we read, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female Created he them. We're living in a time when it appears most people believe that we have evolved. Therefore, any intelligence we have has developed over millions of years. How wrong can we be if we think that way? No, God created us for his good pleasure. We are created beings and we've been given various abilities and I believe that our intelligence comes from Almighty God. We're created in his image. Hallelujah. In fact, the Apostle Paul pointed this out to the uh, Greeks there in Athens. Acts chapter 17, verse 28. When he was um, uh, debating, disputing with the uh, Stoics there, uh, he said... Paul said, for in him, that's in God, we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Wonderful opportunity that Paul had on Mars Hill in Athens to speak with those and to reveal uh, this unknown God being none other than the Lord God Almighty. And indeed, his precious son, the Lord Jesus Christ. In him we live and move and have our being. Hallelujah. So by and large, mankind shunned almighty God. And we got to the point where man has said in so many words, let us make AI in our own image. This is what man is striving to perfect, an artificial, sentient being one which will integrate with the few, that's of course the elite, and indeed replace the many, the useless eaters, question mark. This is already taking place with massive job loss warnings and with the transhumanism on the near horizon, all privacy will be gone. Even one's thoughts could be in someone else's control. But so back to the present. God has said to us, us in his uh, second commandment, we read that, of course, in Exodus 20, verse 4. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above 
or that's in the earth beneath, or that's in the water under the earth. So what does this second commandment mean? Is it wrong to photograph or to draw pictures of people or animals? Should we be erecting effigies of famous people in our streets? This commandment raises questions for which we must find answers in God himself. And indeed, God gives us guidance in the last part of this commandment. Uh, in verse 5 of that same chapter, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers unto the children, or upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So this, I believe, is the testing point. Will AI, or those minding or controlling AI, Will there be a demand for worship and penalty for disobedience? And again, posing the question, there is a ready answer in Scripture. The answer is ultimately yes. There will be a demand to worship that image. In fact, it's found in the Revelation chapter 13. Let me read it out and you'll see what I mean. And he, that's the false prophet, deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which was, had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So there is coming a time then when uh, I believe AI will be using that, um, that man who's left on the earth will be required to comply with uh, the authority to bow down to that image, worship the image of the beast, and indeed uh, to take the mark. And as many as don't do that, they will be executed. Well, this has happened before, well before the rise of modern technology. Do you remember Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego and the image on the plain of Dura? Uh, then it was a towering golden effigy of Nebuchadnezzar. By the end time scenario, uh, we'll probably, uh, with the evolving of technology and AI, um, we believe that that is what will be used to give, and again in verse 15 that we just cited, of um, the Revelation 13. He had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Again, is that AI? Um, that the image of the beast should both speak, a speaking image, there we are, and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So again, there's that aspect. Just like Shadrach and, Amish, and Meshach and Abednego were thrown into that fiery furnace, so I believe there's coming a time when non-compliance will be met with death. And we're fast moving toward that time with the rise of digital identification. However, we must concede that technology can be used for good as well as evil. Like fire, it's a good servant, but a bad master. So the main thrust of our thoughts is how far do we become involved with artificial intelligence or let AI become involved with us? To a certain extent, we're being softened and conditioned not only to accept, but also to rely on this technology. We may not choose this route, but it is being chosen for us. Of course, a universal example of this is the mobile phone. From being a simple means of verbal communication, the phone, a telephone, it has burgeoned into an indispensable multi-tool 
It's a flashlight, a camera, a sat-nav, dictionary, library, language translator, travel agency for buying your airline tickets, personal television studio, social media facilitator. The list is as long as the apps available in the Play Store. And all's well and good. AI is a good servant. But what happens when man misuses his God-given intelligence to generate te technology with feeling? The sentient AI, sentient artificial intelligence. Let us make AI in our own image. Mankind then would have reached a godlike status for which God judged the Tower of Babel builders. Even those in the know are warning governments of the consequences of allowing unchecked, unregulated research and development of AI. Quoting a headline from the Telegraph, the 16th of May last month, we put the world in danger with artificial intelligence, admits chat GPT creator, Sam Altman, and I'm just quoting him here in the article. Tech companies are in danger of unleashing a rogue artificial intelligence that will cause significant harm to the world without urgent intervention by governments, the creator of chat GPT has admitted. Appearing before US politicians, Open AI chief executive Sam Altman lauded the new generation of digital chatbots for their potential to improve nearly every aspect of our lives. However, he admitted that they had also created the risk of catastrophe amid growing fears that programmers could accidentally create superintelligence that decides to wipe out humanity. Well, again, we, we read the Bible and we've got some ideas of what the Lord has in mind for humanity. But this man, presumably a non-believer, Sam Altman, can see dangers. He goes on to say, my worst fear is that we, the field, the technology, the industry, cause significant harm to the world. If this technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong. We want to work with the government to prevent that from happening. So basically, the problem with all this, the problem is that artificial intelligence appears to be more, exponentially more, intelligent than human intelligence. The recent uh, prominence given to chat, GPT and the like has highlighted that the current mire of fake news and disinformation which bedevils our society... And uh, we know from various reports how um, there has been a, a, a sort of proliferation, if you like, of, of all sorts of uh, lying things. Of course, we know who's the author of lies, even the devil himself. Um, yes, I mean, uh, I think the clue lies in the name, artificial intelligence. Artificial meaning unnatural, imitation. Sham, man-made, mimicking the real thing. Remember years ago, in the architect's office I was working in, um, they employed an artist to actually um, pen or, or, or picture, paint, if you like, um, whatever medium it was at that time, um, how the proposed building would look in the street scene. And uh, there it was, of course, that was obviously to help the uh, sort of planning process to convince the committee and so forth. Um, but eventually, of course, uh, it came with the computerised um, graphic imaging that you couldn't actually tell whether, in fact, uh, that was a proposed building that was in the street scene or whether, in fact, uh, it was actually built, you know, whether it was <laughs> real, whether it was actually there, whether it was a photograph untouched, if you like, of, of the street scene. Such uh, was the power to convince the eye of the reality of something that really is, uh, is, is um, false, as it were. <clears throat> um, okay, 
I believe um, that there can be a problem should this carry on with uh, the cloning of voices and the um, reconstruction of uh, video imaging and so forth. Um, that uh, one can have oneself projected as being or, or saying something or, or admitting to something or whatever it might be, uh, which one didn't do because it's all been sort of uh, faked up, as it were. But so convincingly, how can the courts in the future, of courts of law, distinguish between the authentic and the fake? Open question there. I believe, and uh, Sam Altman's quote confirms this, that sentient, artificial intelligence, sentient meaning be able to f experience feelings and having a mind of its own, is open to d d demonic uh, manipulation. Just as we've seen with uh, video stroke computer games and virtual reality, VR headsets, being portals and introductions to the demonic world. Understand that there are opportunities for simulated religious worship with virtual priests officiating. It's interesting that if you take the letters I am AI and you read it backwards, it's like a palindrome and it reads the same backwards. I am AI. <coughs> Uh, that's just a little aside, whether there's anything in that, I don't know. But I do believe that the evil one can actually um, uh, seek to take over, as it were, these things that, that man is in the process of um, uh, uh, developing. <coughs> in uh, 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5, we read, I know this, all, this, know this also, that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce bakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. So we've got to look out. We've got a warning here, haven't we? Is intelligence in the Bible? This is another question that I asked myself and found the answer. Yes, the word intelligence occurs in the King James uh, once, I believe. And here it is in Daniel's book, verse, uh, chapter 11, verses 30, 32. For the ships of Chittim shall come against him. Therefore he shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the holy covenant. So that shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the holy covenant. In the New King James Version, it says, so he shall return and show regard to those who forsake the Holy Covenant. And arms shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that make it desolate. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be he corrupt by flatteries, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Now, in this context, intelligence is used in a bad light. The power and authority at the time, and that was thought in, in those days to be Antiochus Epiphanes, showed favour to those who forsake the Holy Covenant. In fact, Jesus spoke about the abomination that make it desolate. And that, of course, is profaning the holy place. And Jesus spoke about this in the Olivet Discourse. It's quite interesting here because we were talking earlier about the, what, we, what I believe to be um, the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. And, of course, to profane the holy place for the abomination that makes desolate to profane the holy place, there's got to be a holy place for that one to profane. 
And uh, I believe that that's the uh, holy place in the temple. Okay, Matthew 24, again, well-known words of Jesus, the Olivet Discourse. For many false prophets shall rise, verse 11, and shall deceive many, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand, then let them that be in Judea flee unto the mountains. Our Lord highlighted Daniel's prophecy by saying, whoso readeth, let him understand. This is in brackets in my Bible, but I believe the Lord was emphasising the atrocious act this time arranged in honour and worship of the Antichrist and described in the Revelation chapter 13, which we've referred to earlier. It's the one that uh, gives life to the image and so forth. Okay, so it could be that halfway through the tribulation, during the end days that we're thinking about, artificial intelligence will be utilised, spewing out threats and menaces to bring about compliance to worship the image and take the mark. So we have talked about human intelligence from God. Of course, God gives humans intelligence. We've also uh, talked about artificial intelligence from man, but almost certainly it's going to be used as a tool of Satan. I'd like to close by mentioning... God's intelligence. Our Lord came to this earth to do the will of his Father. And in doing this, he manifested the doctrine of his Father. And this came to my notice um, a few weeks ago in our daily Bible reading. John's Gospel, chapter 7, starting at verse 14. Now, about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up to the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters? having never learned. Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh his glory, sorry, but he seeketh his glory that sent him. The same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Jesus, of course, is talking about his Father, who sent Jesus into this world to glorify uh, his Father. So, to the Jews at the time, Jesus seemed ordinary enough. So, how come he's, and again, I'm using an expression which I don't like to use about our Lord Jesus, but to the Jews at the time, you can imagine he's just a... He's punching above his weight, as it were. How come? But I think that expression um, describes the Jews' incredulity. Finally, doesn't that last sentence challenge us? But he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness in him. Jesus came to do his Father's will. And indeed, that reading of what happened to the apostles in Acts is really something that we should also take on board. That those disciples came to do the will of the Lord Jesus. In fact, in Acts 4, verse 13 that we've read, Now when they, that's the authority, saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, They marvelled and they took knowledge of them that they'd been with Jesus. There we have God's intelligence. Yes, being manifested in man. So what is our witness, words and worship? If they don't demonstrate that we too have been with Jesus. I leave you with those thoughts tonight. Artificial intelligence...
Is it a tool of man or can it be used as a tool of the devil? But no, God's intelligence is what we should be seeking after. Yes, human intelligence, we thank the Lord for the brains that he's given to us and been able to use them. But we seek the Lord, don't we? May people recognise us as having been and still are, please God, in spirit, been with Jesus. Amen.